I will call to order the October 2nd meeting of the Callis Cemetery Commission at 5.05 p.m. People present here include myself, Michael Fullerton, the chair, Juanita Nunn, vice chair. Will you act as secretary? I'm driving that tonight and my head's still a little fuzzy. I'll do it. All right. I will go yeah. back to Unless you. Sage comes. All right, Laura Daly and what's her name? <laughs> I always do that. <laughs> Sherry Fitch, who will act as cemetery um, secretary. <laughs> and we hope to have here Stephanie Kaplan of the member of the public on Zoom, though right now she seems to be trying to collect. Here she is. All right. Okay. Ch any changes to the agenda? If Randy, too. <laughs> Hi, Randy. Hi, Randy. Hi. Okay. So we the agenda as written. Uh, approval of the minutes of the last meeting in August. I think we I think everybody has read these. Any suggestions or changes to those minutes? They're fine. I make a motion to approve. Second. Second. Then all Eight. in favor? Aye. 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 Minutes are approved. I will see to it. They are posted. Signing of warrants. There aren't any to sign. The sexton cannot be here tonight, but I have most of the information he would present. The last mowing of all the cemeteries has been completed for the season. Uh, the billing will continue in his normal uh, sections until it's done. He will leave the cemeteries open until it's impossible to get in, which means when it starts to snow. Uh, and I will add to that the next item, which is the Spruce Tree in Fairview Cemetery, which he proposed that we cut down. In order to do that, we had to get the town tree warden to agree that it could be done, and that required a 15-day comment period for the public. I talked to Neil Maker this afternoon and he said nobody said anything one way or another. So we are okay to cut that tree down whenever we can get to it. And the last thing in his report has to do with the fence at the Ainsworth Cemetery. We have had that decrepit old fence taken down and now we have to decide what to do about replacing it. We have two options. It's not in a historic district, so we don't have to put it back the way it was unless we feel it's necessary. To do that will cost $6,800, not including the painting, and I'm pretty sure that we could get volunteers to paint that small fence. The second option is to put back a false chain fence, which is what is around the sides and back already, that's pretty traditional also. We have other cemeteries in town with that treatment. But uh, I think we have been thinking about the fact that the public should be allowed to weigh in before we make a decision. So the thought was, I would put together a notice, which I would send to all of the members of the commission. So we agree on the wording. I would post that notice on Front Porch Forum, all of the locations in town that we normally post things, and anywhere else that we could get the word out. I think Friends of Callus would put it on theirs. You have a Facebook account, Laura, that you could do it. And if we got that out tomorrow, that we give the public 10 days before our budget meeting to weigh in, do they want the fence or do they want the chain? Did, is the chain still 1800 uh, I think it was 1800 okay. that he had. So that, if everybody in town says, no, no, we want a wood fence, we'll propose that to the select board at our budget meeting. If they're willing to pay for it, then we'll put it back. If they say, no, we can't afford it, then we'll have to put the chain back. So I believe public comment can start right now because I think, Stephanie, that's the reason you're here. You are correct. Uh, that is the reason I'm here. Um, I, you know, as you probably know, um, my husband, Randy, who's also sitting here, he put that fence up. He got the boards. I think he got the boards from John Samanskis. Is that what happened? Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah. And then Randy primed them and painted them and put them up. And um, it's it was some years ago. And 
it well, it was fine for years, and then it got, as you said, Michael, it got decrepit, and it it was in terrible shape. Um, I feel I feel strongly as a neighbor to the Ainsworth Cemetery that it should be wood. Uh, it looks does look more traditional. It just looks better, <laughs> and. And it looks more, uh, I guess, traditional, even though you say that the chains can be traditional too. And I, I wanted to just ask you what was spent on the Robinson Cemetery fence and who paid for that wood? Because I know that there was a to-do about, it. Was, John McCullough was saying you have to have wood um, because that's the way it always was. I think all the cemeteries were once wood, but I guess had wood fences, but I guess because it's in the historic district, John was interpreting this, the, the rules that the, that had to be wood. I didn't agree, and I said so at the time to whomever was on the cemetery commission then. But in any event, that's what was done, and I'm interested to know um, how much it cost and who paid for it. I can roughly say that the combination of the Robinson Cemetery fence and the OS Church Cemetery fence, both of which are in a historic district, was something just over $30,000, not including the painting. And the town okay. paid for that. Okay. Okay, so it would be a matter, it would be a matter of um, getting the select board's approval to spend, what did you say, 1800 1600 not including painting? Yes, yeah, six thousand eight hundred to replace the fence, not including the painting, and okay. I believe eighteen hundred to put up a chain fence, which essentially would need no further maintenance. Right. <clears throat> and I understand also that you used um, pressure treated wood. You're using pressure treated wood now for the boards. Correct. Okay. That so works. one would that extends the life of the fence. Yeah, one would hope so. I mean, I just think I was kind of impressed at how long that. That, that wood fence lasted and it wasn't pressured to you. But anyway, um, so I, I I don't know whether I should make the, I mean, my argument is that this is not in the historic district, but it's an historic cemetery. And this cemetery means a lot, at least to the people who live on the road. I don't know about the rest of town. I don't know. I Probably most of the town doesn't even know it's there. I mean, Jack Hill Road is not a major throughway. Um, but it's a lovely cemetery. You've all been there, and it's a lovely cemetery. And it, I think it it really deserves the same kind of respect that the other cemeteries were afforded. Just because we're in the we're in the poor section of town, but we still respect our cemetery. Um, so anyway, that, I mean, I don't have much more to say than that. What else is there to say, other than the fact that I doubt that my neighbors know about this. I, I don't think they know what's going on other than Sage. And I know Sage, I don't know why she's not there because she, I know she was gonna be there and I know that she feels um, pretty strongly about it too, although she may not express that to the commission. She said Ainsworth actually built her house. I hadn't known that. Yeah. Um, yeah, anyway, I mean, there's not, as I said, there's not a lot more to say. Um, right, well, I'm as I have, as I have said, we're going to put this out for public comment, and you are one person in favor of wood already. So we'll give everybody about 10 days, as many notices as we can put out there, and see what the town as a whole thinks about it. I really appreciate your doing that. I think that's great that you're doing it. I really appreciate it. Um, so thank you. Great. We work for the town. We try to do what the town wants, <laughs> if we can afford it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So you okay. Mentioned, you mentioned asking the select board about paying for the fence. I, can you clarify what you mean by that? Like, do we have to ask them to spend that money? I thought we were our own commission. Well, yes, we can do what we want, but we have to present a budget on the 14th of this month. Right. They are asking for austerity. So what we will do is give them the alternatives and say, here's the money, this is our wish list. If the town wants a wood fence, then we want a wood fence. That's in our budget. It's up to them to decide if they're gonna give, give us that money or not. So do they normally go through the budget like that? They would go through the items in the budget and decide whether they wanted to allocate the money? 
Yes, that's what. Well, no. Right? So, <clears throat> okay. Well, the, the last few years, it's been an, an article at, voted on at town meeting. Yeah. Um, so they, I mean, they don't really need to approve it. The townspeople approve it at town meeting. That's true. Right. But I, you know, <clears throat> I, I see nothing wrong with going to them and saying, this is our budget. Yeah. And this is what we would like to do. And these yeah. are extras you know, that we might like to do if we could. Yeah. I was asked by the town clerk to be ready to present a budget to the select board on the 14th. Yeah. So that's what we're going to try to put together tonight. Yeah. I, um, I went last year um, and everyone was new last year and some are new this year. Um, just to, cause, because they didn't know how it worked with us because we're like it's in the sound. So I just basically went and explained how it worked and that for the past several years it's been an article um, that was voted on at town meeting. Um, therefore it's kind of separate from their budget. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's the way it'll be this year. It's just they may try to talk us out of certain things if they think it's too much money. Yeah. Actually, our budget is something like three tenths of one percent of the entire town budget. So we'll see. But I'm asked that we present a budget to the select board, and that's what we're going to try to agree yeah. on tonight. I think we've done well in the past at keeping it pretty level. Yeah, and um, that's one other thing I admitted from the Sexton's report. All of his contracts, mowing, hedge trimming, and Sexton contract are level. There's no change. So that helps. Yeah. Okay. Fence painting. The Robinson Cemetery fence has been entirely primed with volunteer labor. We got them out there. On the 12th of October, weather permitting, I have the entire Union 32 football team coming over here to paint the fence, and I'll put out a call for other people. If we get enough people there, I think we can put the finish coat on that fence. If the, the weather cooperates. What's October the date? 12th. October 12th. That's so that. hopefully that'll work. The Old West Church fence is not painted. Uh, when we get to the budget discussion, I'm gonna talk about money for doing that. I would love to think we could get it done by volunteers, but it was a heck of a lot of work to coerce people into coming out and painting. I hope we can do it again, we'll have to see. I think if the Old West Church folks jumped on board with trying to rally volunteers, they would have their own subset that they could pull from too. I would hope so, that's a good idea. I hadn't thought of that. Okay, so budgets. We started to discuss this last meeting before we had to stop because we couldn't get the Zoom to work. But you all had been looking at the report that I had from Carrie Bradley as to how much money we had in our budget. And the fact that we got two large bills that we were not expecting. One was $6,300 from the Sexton for repairing, resetting, and putting back into shape stones at the Poplar Hill Cemetery. And the other was a $9,300 bill for buying and installing corner markers. Uh, Joe now will not do anything outside the budget without talking to us first, so we won't get any more surprise stonework. The cost of buying and setting up the corner markers is included in the price of a lot. And as you all know, we changed that a couple of months ago. So we no longer have that money disappear into the endowment, and now we have to pay it out of our own budget. That's what that $9,300 is. So we should get that back eventually. I hope. So my question is, can we ask the endowment to let us take that money back out? I'm assuming that I would have to talk to the trustees of public funds and then talk to the manager of the account. Can we do that? 
The endowment is there to reduce the amount of money that we have to ask the town for by taking that $9,300 back out of there. That would reduce our underwater level considerably. Okay. I wouldn't have to ask. Did we figure out if those numbers that we were looking at last time were for the fiscal year or calendar year or how that was looking? Um, right now, as of September 25th, I had us $10,065 in the hole. Since then, there's been one other $800 bill for taking down the fence at Ainsworth, which is not a big deal. I discussed it with the town administrator, and he said, if you can get the money, great. If you can't, continue to run a deficit. There's nothing else you can do. Except for that, how are we that far in the hole when the fiscal year started in July? Yeah, well, that's the... Uh, the $9,300 and the 63, 62, 66, 25, no, I'm sorry, 63, that we did not expect. Yeah, it should have started, thank you, it should have started over July 1st, though. We should have gotten the full amount we asked for at town meeting last year. And we did. And we spent that entire chunk plus some in four months. Yep. We started out... As, as of August 31st, we had $35,085 in our account. And we have spent those big amounts since then above and beyond what we expected to send. <coughs> I'm trying to, uh, to develop a spreadsheet so I can watch this day by day. I usually get a monthly statement from Carrie. He's been so swamped with work that I did not get one for September. I wasn't able to open that for some reason. Um, with the document from Carrie. Say that again? Your mask is on your heart. I wasn't able to open the document from him. I, I'm not sure why it wouldn't. Hmm, I don't know what format it's in. I have, I have an open office program that opens everything he sends me. I know some people aren't opening what I'm sending them, so I'm trying to send them out in multiple formats, OCD or Excel or whatever. So, okay, I'm trying to understand this. Just because we're doing this budgeting this time, I want to know where we're at with it. So on that lower part where it says FY25 cemetery funds available as of August 31st. Yep. We've got the 45,000 appropriation and then the expenditure. So we would have that 15,000 left. Right. Then we, we would add in the income that we got the 3,000, the 87, the 81. Yep. That would bring us to 35,000. I see down here where it says remaining balances, but those haven't been billed yet, right? Say that again. On the bottom below where yeah that's what's left on the contracts as of that date right they get billed periodically every time he sends a bill he says this is what's left it'll be billed every two months or whatever his interval is so by the time our fiscal year is over that's what we will have spent on what we've already committed is what you're saying right so gotcha. at the end of the year that those three contracts will be zero all paid for so then if you do the 35 take away the 28 Plus those, okay, now I'm starting to understand. Plus the quarter post, the contracts, the tree removal, the burial expense. By the end of the year, that's where we'll be. We're not there yet, but by the time we pay out all the stuff that we have pending. Right. Gotcha. Okay. And that's what my little sheet on after that one is supposed to reflect. Okay. What money we have, what we have left to pay on contracts. And as we sell these corner posts, is that money going to come back off that 9300 So every time we sell a plot, we, we, we do an actual? What, I, what I'm suggesting is, can we get that 9300 back out of the endowment? Because that's where all that money goes. It will never happen like this again, because we will never have to pay for corner posts again. What happens when the ones we have run out? doesn't matter. Remember what we changed our billing. When you buy a plot, when you bought a plot last year, the cost of corner post and installation 
was in that lot price and the whole lot price had to go into the endowment. So we changed that. The price of a lot no longer includes corner posts. The lot owner must pay to have those bought and installed. And it goes right to the sexton. We have nothing more to do with corner posts. So what about the $9,300 worth of corner posts that you just paid for? Is that a pile of posts? Those, those are all the corner posts that have to be put in for all of the particular burials that he's done so far. Oh, so those are already paid for, those right. are already paid for by the plot sales. Yeah, they were all paid for, but I'm the money saying, went into the endowment. Yeah. So I'm thought, saying, let's get that money back up. It was that connection that I was Yeah, I thought go. that he had just bought a house. Me too, yeah. yeah. But these yeah. are for, you know, lots That's of my understanding, is these are for things that you already done. Okay. Yeah, that shouldn't have come up, when you come up like that. Right. And that will never happen again because of our price structure change. Yeah. Okay. And the other sudden bill for doing all the stonework should not ever come up again because I made it clear to him, don't do anything like that without talking to us first. Is that in the contract somewhere, in the Sexton contract? Is that part of it? I don't think I've ever... The Sexton contract, as I understand, it just covers his administrative duties, you know, buying and selling plots and so forth. Yeah, That's, getting the people and selling Yeah, it's $2,500 a year. So and, the, and then the mowing is separate. Yeah, he does all the paperwork. So should we schedule in stone cleaning in our budget for every year and make sure that we are tracking what places need that? So we can say, you know, this year we're going to do Gainsworth stones, next year we're going to do, you know what I mean? Yep, at our next meeting we should talk to him about what is your opinion of what stone repair work is there left to do and how much of it should we do every year? We should be pretty much caught up because we started doing this. Well, I mean, it's probably something new to, again now because I, I'm, I don't remember the timeline, but I'm, I'm thinking it was probably 10 years ago. We started planning this and doing one cemetery at, at a time, or if it's a big cemetery, maybe just half of it, at trying to do some each year. And we are caught up now, but it's like painting the 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 uh, Golden Gate Bridge. When when you finish, you get you know, it's time to start over again. Right. So it's probably there. Probably are some that would need to sure. clean again. Well, that but yeah, we that would be the best way to do it. I think to plan a certain amount each year. Right. And we know that this year it cost us six, how much was it, sixty six twenty five, and that was for Poplar. Poplar so, Hill, yeah, right? The whole, the whole Everything thing. in that cemetery is now supposedly one hundred percent. I believe it. That's a beautiful place. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And he does good work. No yes. question about it. So maybe we should think about like, because that's one of our bigger ones, isn't it? Would you say Poplar Hill is one of the bigger ones? Oh, it's moderate. It's not as big as either Robinson. It's maybe about the size of OS Church. Okay. It'll be a little smaller than Hudson when Hudson finally gets all put together. Right. The thing about Poplar that scares me is the entrance to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's, it's not the driving in, it's the leaving. <laughs> you can't see cars coming in. So should I then talk to the trustee of public funds and if necessary, the endowment? So let's be formal and move that I do that. Yeah, we should have you do that or maybe see, I don't know, we don't have a lot of time before this budget meeting. I don't think <laughs> it's going to affect the budget meeting. It's a different issue. Okay. Um, do, did we get the amount that um, we were going to ask for when we did our last year's budget. Remember, I don't remember what they were thinking out was. Seven hundred is what it says here. Did we get that yet? That so that's been in there from the beginning. Yeah. Um, the ex the T row price distribution. For 2023 was 9400 
we actually got what is on that sheet 83 something 87.15 yeah because the uh, value of the endowment decreased over the year yeah but we don't get that unless we ask for it we did yeah you did you guys actually did yeah. okay you and michael went and asked for it um the unspent fy24 appropriation though I thought we were spending that down with some of Joe's bills right before the fiscal year switched over so that we wouldn't have that 8,000 carried over. Yeah, they covered some of the expenses, extra expenses for the expenses. Yep. That's what I thought. I thought that's what was supposed to happen <laughs> because it looks like on, on paper, it looks like we didn't spend that money. So maybe we don't need that much money, but we really do need that much money. Yeah, <laughs> and more. Yeah. Right? Yes. Because this year, this we're we're not going to allow this to happen next time around. So I can also, when I talk to the to the endowment, uh, find out we're not supposed to take money out so that it reduces the endowment. So that's why the amount we get from the endowment varies from year to year. So it's a process. So we can take money out, but it's a process. It's a yeah. We take always take a percentage out. And the percentage depends on the value of the endowment. Right. So, uh, somebody want to move that I call the trustee of public funds and the endowment and see about getting that money? I move that, that Michael check with the trustee of public funds to see if we can get more money from the endowment. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 So be it. Now we come to the fun thing. I'm going to craft a budget proposal. So to start with, hedge trimming, mowing, and the section contract are exactly the same as they were last year, $7,385 and $2,500. And if we just look at the same categories, Burial expense, we put it a thousand, it's a placeholder. We have no way of knowing. And we get paid for burials. And the sexton buries, does the burial for slightly less than what we charge. So we actually make a little money from burials. Special projects. I see two major special projects that we need to talk about. One is painting the Old West Church fence. Joe could not give me an accurate idea, but I looked at how many hours of volunteer time we had painting the Robinson fence. And I tried to apply that to Old West Church. And my guess is if we hired it done, whether Joe did it or we put it out to bid, we would spend $10,000 priming and painting that fence. It's more intricate than Robinson. Yeah. So that would be a pie in the sky budget request with the idea that if we got volunteers to do it, we would not spend that money and it would roll over in the next year and reduce our budget by that amount. The other is the uh, Ainsworth fence, which we've already talked about. The uh, pie in the sky request would be, will you, <laughs> you want us to spend $6,800 on a wood fence, which we would then paint, or chain. So those are the special projects that I'm thinking about. Anybody got an idea of anything else we might want to do in a year of austerity? <clears throat> And a few things we've talked about. Um, I'm not sure if I remember what they are though right now. Well, one thing we talked about is eventually putting a fence around Hudson. Yeah, yeah I think that's yeah. some years out. But that's not a, certainly not a priority. I yeah, don't think. and it's yeah, there's there's what half a dozen burials in there. Oh no, there's three. Three. <laughs> so it'll need a fence, and it'll be a big expense. Um, there's another thing we'd like to do is to take down that decrepit mess on the north side of, uh, of Fairview. So it's mostly on the ground. It's not a big deal. The public can't see it unless somebody walks in there. But that should get taken out of there. But 
that's not a big rush. And there's a couple of short fence sections in that cemetery that <clears throat> I don't think they need to be painted right now, but they will eventually, but they're simple volunteer projects. So I don't know what else we might want to do. Should we think about some of the hazardous trees we may end up having to deal with through the year? Wasn't there a couple at Robinson that people were asking about having to cut back or cut down on the tree? I, that was being discussed because Neil Maker got involved in that, being in some shade trees. Right. Um, there's another category coming up that we could stick some of that money into. Okay. Um, the only other thing I remember a while back talking about the land that's next to the, I don't know why I can't think of the names of any of the cemeteries, the one that's up on, behind the store, the East Gallon store headed right to Marshfield. Fairview, mm -hmm. that's Fairview. So, there was talk about lands next to that being potentially available at some point and whether or not, or either that or the land by Robinson and that we may want to explore expansion at some point. Right. Yeah. And the good thing about needing more spaces at Hudson is a big empty space right now. So we got quite a few years. There, but there might be people that want to be with their families and the other ones that, right. that don't, I don't know what we have for space left at the other ones, but. That was something we were talking about, so should we just yeah. kind of put a pin in it and think about it? Yeah. At some point, Joe said we had somewhere around 400 burial plots available. Okay. All right. If we're in good shape, then I wouldn't worry about it, but I just know that it's not easy to get land. I know. Need it. I, I don't know how many plots are available in Hudson, but I know it's seven tenths of an acre yeah. is the actual size. Okay, any other thoughts? Other special projects? Okay, so supplies, we had 2,000. I'm going to say let's ask for 2,500 this time. Suggest that because if we get volunteers to do the fence, we'll be buying the paint right. and the rollers. So the supplies that are listed in last year's budget, we only had $35 worth of paint that we spent before August. We spent more than that because we bought uh, all of the paint, all of the primer for Robinson, but that probably, I, I've got, I could dig out the bill if I could find it. I think we actually bought that before July 1st. Right, so if we, if we did that, that shouldn't be, that should be out of that 3000 from this budget. It only says we spent $35 out of the supplies from last year. Uh, that was for a bunch of rollers that I bought at the hardware store. Right. So Roller where, covers. Where did the paint come out of? The, I think the paint was paid for before July 1st. It was in last year. Right. This is last year, the actual year to date, right? Yeah. So right. So the budget, the actual year to date. And then there's August. There's nothing listed under supplies for August 24, and the only thing before that is 3578. Yep. And so again, if we if the paint was paid for in July or before July. So, so it should have been in. It's not even in this year's budget. It was last year's budget. Right. But well, this is last year's budget we're looking at at the top. The 2024? FY24 is what's up at the top year. here. Budget, actual year to date, and then we have the August 24th, so that would be what we're spent this year. Right, but again, that paint was paid for before the current fiscal year. I understand. What I'm trying to say is this is last year's budget, last year's spending. This is what we've done since July 1st. So here, that would be up until July 1st of last year. That should have come out of that 3,000. I'm feeling what, like- Okay, what fiscal year are we in right now? 25. 25. 25, this is 25. Yeah. This is 24, this is 25. I don't know. I think the same thing with the, the money from Joe because we have this, um, unspent appropriation rolled over is that 8100 mm -hmm. and that should have come out somewhere up here 
somewhere up here. I'd have to sit down with Carrie and really go through that. I think we're gonna have to, unfortunately. Yeah. Because that's. I see what you're saying. I know it's, it's hard because of the way that they set up these yeah, budgets for yeah fiscal year, but that's that's what they're saying. Do you have one of these, Anita? I don't. I just need to print it out. Let me just show you it. I've got my copy in the truck. Can you want to go grab it just so you have an extra one? So this is what you have for Cardi. So that would be last year, right? Fiscal year twenty four. And then that would be 25. Yeah, right, right, right. Okay, and that's what's making it so confusing. Yeah. And then this is everything for this year, from what we spent so far. My confusion is explained by the fact that I've got the wrong town report. Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> well, when do you have? I have 23. Oh, no. I'm going to grab my out of, my of this out of the truck. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Here you go. When I tried to open this, it told me I needed a certain, some certain program. But I've always been able to open them before, so I don't know what this did right this time. Okay, this is the one. Could be just me being not very um, good at doing stuff. Some of the programs. I know when I was, I watched the last select board meeting and they were really looking to cut costs because of how much this year costs the town with the flooding and all of the date, you know, right? They're really want people to pinch. I think what they would do is if I went in there, or as, as many of the rest of you as could do it, we give them our wish list budget, and they might look at us and say, We suggest you do this or don't do that. And if we said, No, this is what we want, we put it on. The report, it gets voted on, and the people either give us some money or they vote it down. Yeah. And if they vote it down, I guess we have to go back for another special meeting to, yeah. to do it. Is it in the back of your pickup? Yes, yeah, so. And that certainly happened, but it doesn't mean it's it grows. <laughs> I also just noticed burial expenses. We usually put a thousand in that budget to hold the place, but there's a zero there. Yeah, that's what we decided on last year. Exactly. Yeah. It made more sense just to leave it blank. Gotcha. Because they came to me with questions like, why is this a thousand, but the actual budget is so much more? Yeah. Well, it's just a placeholder because you don't know how many people you're going to bury. Okay. So we just leave that as a zero? Yeah, that's what we did last year. Yeah. Maybe we should. Yeah. It really doesn't matter. We, no, it doesn't. The money comes in and then some it, of the money goes out. Yeah. We, we keep a little bit. Good. Okay. Um, lost my categories. I'm sorry, you had just finished special, we were talking about special projects. Right. We got off on a tangent. Yeah, so we pretty well got special projects now. What did you put for number 10,000? I was gonna say 10,000 to paint the fence and the 68 or 1800 for the Ainsworth fence. No other special project you can think of? Is the stone cleaning considered a special project? That would be, but I don't yeah. know if I want to put any of that in until we know what, yeah. what Joe thinks has to be done. And I don't think there's anything out there that is not going to last for another year. Yeah, so, I, would, I would agree. We can. Um, yeah, you know more about it than I because you were in on it before I, I came on board. I, uh, yeah, I think we should ask Joe to give us um, his, you know, go around to some of Jerry's and give us his opinion on um, the best way to do it and uh, you know, stay in budget and do a little each year to keep it up. Right. 
And then, is this going to be considered a final budget that you show the select board, or is it a preliminary? This is what we think we're going to need. This yeah, this is our answer. wish list. Okay. That's what um, the email I got from Barbara was. Yeah. Put down what you actually have to have. Put down what you'd like to have. Let them think about it. And again, we can put in whatever we want, and the voters can give it to us or not give it to us. Right. I don't think this select board has any thinking about it, though, is, is yeah. what I'm thinking. They just want to know what's going on, and they're going to make suggestions. Probably yeah. because they want to try to figure out how much they're going to have to, have to ask the town for overall right. for next yeah. year. Which I get, but I know. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Well, yeah. But we shouldn't get nailed down to it. Yeah. Because we really can make our own. And if they complain about the cost of painting that fence, I'm going to say, well, the town decided they wanted those fences that way. Yeah. You know, so we didn't have a choice. Okay, what other categories have we got? Miscellaneous. We always put in $1,000. I don't know what that could cover. We had 2,000 there last year. Yeah. And then I didn't spend anything. Okay. Yeah, that's just for anything that doesn't seem to fit in any other category. Exactly. Oh, another special project. Um, cutting down that spruce tree. Yeah. We don't oh, have yeah. any money to do it now, but it's okay. So next fiscal year, put in, yeah. I don't know. I can ask Joe, two or $300, I think, would do it. It's not a big project. Is it something that's in the town right away? Because that would be awesome. I would leave it till next year. Well, if it's in the town right away, the town, the select board, well, like the, the town. The one on, um, at uh, Short, yeah. Right. They, did a, they did a great job. Right, and it didn't cost us. Yeah, if they and, have, my, and my neighbor took the wood away, so yeah. it's like, well, if, uh, if they're interested in doing it, they have the time and energy to do it, do it. great. They're getting paid anyway. Well, if it's in the right way, they have, they don't have to, but they're strongly encouraged by the town's yeah, insurance. Yeah. Right. But uh, th this is actually, I don't know where it is exactly, but I thought it was actually in the cemetery, is it? It is. It's it right is. in it's the in middle the, of the, yeah. Yeah, of, so on the right side as you're going up the hill. Yeah, so that would have to be us. Okay. Another thing I can do is to ask Carrie about that. Okay, I think that's every category that we're required to make note of. We can add categories as needed, but I don't think there's anything we need to add. At this point, yep. I also think that we should we should not call the Ainsworth um, potentially seven almost seven thousand dollars part of a wish list. If the town ends up saying we want it painted, we want it wood, then yeah. that's yeah. not going to be something we can negotiate with the select board if the right. town says it. Yeah, if a hundred people respond and eighty-two of them want a wood fence, then we're going to give them a wood fence. How are we going to do the response? Um, I would ask, respond to whoever sends it out. They could respond to me. If you send out your Facebook group, you keep track and tell me what the numbers are. And uh, if Friends of Callis sends one out, I'll ask them to yeah, send yeah. me the results. Or if they okay, respond to any, any number, right. Right. make sure we keep track and print it back. Yeah. Well, some of the reason I ask is I could set up a survey monkey with a link where you could send a link to people and they could do it and it would track every every response for us and then we would just have a result at the end of the 10 days. That would run. How do you get the message out to everybody? I would send you a link just like the Zoom link that you have. I would send you that sure. and then when you put it on like front porch forum. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Send out that, you put that link in there and they would just click on it and it would take and them right to the page. That would take care of everybody. Why don't you send me that link ASAP? I'll create one tonight. And then if uh, anybody wants to do a paper version of it, we could ask them to leave something at the town clerk's office or something yeah. that we gather at the end in case they don't have internet access. And then we cover our bases. And as citizens of the house, we <coughs> serve that as well. Yep. So you send me that, I will write up a proposed announcement 
and uh, what? get it out. Yeah, so do a survey, send you a link, and then we'll ask people if they want to be, if they want to say yes or no, order Jane, right? Mm -hmm. Order Jane and your name on a piece of paper and leave it at the town clerks and we'll pick them up. Okay. In 10 days. Good. So if you get that link, I'll try to get some announcement out tomorrow. Okay. I'll do that right to me. Anything else you can think of in a budget mode? Yes. Um, way back two years ago or so, when I first became chair, I suggested that we have um, a manual, remember, for everyone. Um, I was thinking that I would go to Keegan and see if she could get us an estimate on how much it would cost to get that done and printed. And then we could decide whether or not we'd want to, because it have to come out of our budget. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a manual for members of the commission? Yes, so if someone new comes on, you can hand them this and it will help them like come up to speed. There is a whole manual of the duties and responsibilities of the Cemetery Commission, which is now online on the Cemetery yeah. Commission and one site. of the things, I've got one I made up for myself. And that's one of the things I included in there. Yeah. Um, it doesn't give you a lot of the ins and outs though. It gives you like the overviews of our responsibilities and you know what we're held to in the rules that we have to have. Well, there's by. two different things and they're both online. Uh, but I just thought it would be helpful to, to have it in writing for each person, or especially new people coming on. The system um, we have. One of them is the digging deep, yep. and the other is the actual statutes. Yep. Um, and they say the same thing, but in different language, so I just thought it would be helpful for both. And it would be good to have the NIMRIC information for people so that if they wanted to continue doing the records years down the road, they'd understand our systems and such. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. So, um, yeah, if you want me to, to follow up on that, finally, um, you know, just let me know, let me know what you would like included, and I'll see what I can find out about the cost. And okay. Because I think, it, because it would come out of our budget, it's something that we have to think about. Um, okay. Anything else? We had a quorum. We've gotten essential things done. Stephanie was able to make it. Mm -hmm. Stephanie was able to make it. We got her on. Oh. Her and Randy. Yeah. Got them on the story. Sure. No. It was just a day for you guys. I apologize. It's okay. But I was glad that they got to be. I am so glad you made that happen because of. Yeah. Right. Speak. Yeah. So just briefly on that fence, we're going to send out a survey to the whole town and explain what the issues are. This amount of money for a wood fence, this amount of money for a chain, what do you think it should be? And if, if the majority of respondents say, we want that fence to be wood the way it was, then that's what we're gonna ask the select board the money for. Um, if they say, no, we think you should save money and put up a chain, then that's what we'll ask the money for. Can you actually give me those numbers again for the wood versus chain, just so I can put that in the survey question? Yeah, 6800 for the wood fence, not including the painting, which I'm sure we can get volunteers to do. Yeah. There's a volunteer right there. <laughs> and uh, I believe it was 1800 to put up a chain fence. That includes drilling into the stone and mounting the hardware for it. And the uh, granite posts and all that stuff's all in that number. The granite posts are already there. Okay. Might be a little post straightening involved, but that sounds like a lot of money for the wood fence, but prices have gone up a lot, so um, yep. it is what it is, I guess. Yep, it is traditional, it has been there, and I fully understand people who say we'd like to see it look like that. So we'll let the public yeah, decide what they want. Like it too, but you know, I, I think it's a good idea. 
um, trying to get people to wait. Can I just say two things? Mm -hmm. um, I feel like all of our cemeteries are really old. And I know I've been attached to Ainsworth because they built our house. Um, or somebody, somebody. Um, but also because the, it has been loved when May Lamb did her sixth grade volunteer project. Oh, yes. We redid that. Okay, yes. like it was all right. So that was so long, that was eight to ten years ago. If I'm trying to do the math, but um, so concentrate, Sage. Um, Juanita, you said you brought up the thing about why we have our own budget, we have our own thing, right? Why do we need to present and or not need to present? But then, my other question is when we put it out, and maybe we don't put it out with this, but. I would love to know what the Robinson Cemetery fence with all three rails were and what the Old West Church would. Like, what did we commit to that um, as opposed to Little Ainsworth? And I would mean this for any, any cemetery. Yep. I don't know if Short ever had a wooden fence. Yeah, yeah. It's such a beautiful cemetery, yeah. though. But it's a it's a different layout too. It's flat, like with the anyway. But so those would be my two things with the getting a concept of. We had huge outlay in the last, I want to say three years, with the Robinson Cemetery fence and still having to paint it, and then the Old West Church. But to think about. Um, I could think about fundraising stuff like that, but yes, let's put it out to the town. Yep. But Juanita's point about the budget and us having our own budget and how is that meeting going to look? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, and we had talked about that. Um, and Michael is is going to the meeting, and even though it's our own budget and it's an article, um, it's. It's just basically an informative. Yeah, thing. I'm sorry if I missed that at the beginning um, of this yeah. meeting. I apologize. Okay. And, you know, we just went over what we would like in the budget and what might be extra. Okay, okay. That kind of thing. Okay. I apologize. You're fine. Good. Okay. Well, then. Mm -hmm. I, right. So it's it's more of a letting them know what we're doing. Thing. Kind of thing. Right. Yeah, absolutely. In in the past we've been summoned like to the principal's office, it felt like, and this isn't like that. <laughs> no. Um, I do have a question about Beansworth though. <clears throat> if the granite posts are already there, yes. then what would he have to drill? He's gotta have different kind of hardware to hang the chain. What's in there is some bolts or nails, some of which are rusted and fallen off. So he's got to put those in there so he can hang the chain. So he's going to there, and it's there different. There are special screws, aren't there, that he needs anchors? I yeah. Just, I have to look at short. And yeah. the nails that are there are at a certain height, and the chain wants to be up near the top so it looks the way it's supposed to look. I wonder if it would be cheaper if we already have those posts there. We would only have to get the wood that goes across, and we wouldn't have to anchor the wood, right? Because we would be anchored to those the same way it was before. Okay, now, the drilling and anchoring is for the chain. Right. There's a lot of nails and screws already in there for a wood fence, some of which may survive, some of which won't, but that's part of his estimate for the wood fence. I wonder if we should ask other people to look at it. I know it feels like last minute, but I wonder if we should ask other fence companies. Yeah, and when I talked about the uh, painting of the Old West Church Cemetery, we can put that out to bid. Joe might say, yeah, I'll do it, and he will not give us a firm estimate. We could put that out to bid yeah. very easily. Yeah. Uh, I, I see we go high on the on the budget for the Ainsworth fence, and then if they end up we end up going the chain, then we save money and we have that old bridge to apply somewhere else. Yep. And if we go with wood, yep. you know, and that also doesn't press our decision to make that right. happen in 10 days to right. have people weigh in. We can have a right. little more time for that. Well, the nice thing is we'll have that survey in here before we go to that 14th meeting. So are we meeting again before then? I have no plans to, unless you think we need to. 
think we would have to to go over the results of the survey before the meeting. I don't think we'd have to do that. I mean, it's, it's yes or no. I mean, it's one. It's an informal. Yeah, we're gathering thing. public information least, on yeah. what they what the so, public so that you will have the information when you go to the meeting. Right. If I can say. Yeah, 240 people responded and 80% of them wanted this. That would be awesome, but I so. don't that many will respond. Yeah. 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 I don't think we need to have a meeting to discuss the results. There they are. Anything else anybody can think of? I, can you just explain to me how you're gonna how you're gonna see it to the select board when you mention the special projects budget? Are you gonna are you gonna say we either want this much or this much based on what they say? I'm gonna tell them what our wish list is, and say what do you think? You think we're asking for too much money to do this project, and and if they don't have any opinion, I'm gonna leave it in there. If they do have an opinion, then yeah, the opinion to... is I'd like the ten thousand dollars to make sure that the OS church fence gets painted. And if I can get volunteers to do it, then I'll cheerfully hand the money back. I think we all would agree to that. Yeah. And the Ainsworth fence, if people say, oh, put up chain, then I'm gonna ask for the chain amount. Okay. And if they all say we want a wood fence, I'm gonna say the public would like the wood fence. So this is what we need. We work for the public. Perfect. As long as they, they realize that it's yeah. not something, if the people say they want wood, it's not a flexible yeah. thing we can do. And any of you that want to come to the, that presentation, please do. What day is it? It's the 14th. And I don't know what time yet. Barb Butler said as soon as everybody is in, um, she'll let us know what time they want us to be there. I do want to just quickly mention the reason I wanted Joe to not do the chain right now was that I felt like I didn't want to be putting money into the fence if we went another way. Mm -hmm. And yep. no problem with this time, timeline of being whatever. It's a small cemetery. Um, but I, that was the main reason. I just didn't want to be putting effort into it when and then change it. There might be, right, because yeah. we've no, been putting effort yeah. into something that we wouldn't fall through and then it'd be all another set of screw holes or whatever. Right. Um, yeah. No pun intended, but it's, oh, it, there's a lot. Um, so I think the survey is a great idea. So thank and we you. And can't, we can't do it till next year anyway. Oh, no, even if the, I don't, yeah. yeah. Right. And I'm sorry I missed the meeting because I didn't get to hear what stuff they said. Well, we could start talking about the volunteers for the Old West Church Cemetery now, too. Mm -hmm. Reach out to some of those social groups like E32 yeah. and, and get it on their radar for next year. Yeah, get it on their radar for sure. But, yeah, that's great that they're going to do that. Were they looking for a volunteer? Oh. Yeah, I'm going to try. Like Perry Stoner, who's the friends of class at Callis. She, yep. her husband coaches football, and that's the way the football team got. Yeah. And I think last year they volunteered for something in Waterbury, and she was like, oh, awesome. maybe you could do a little. So, fantastic. Yeah, I love that. My goal since Jamie will be back is to like supply some like baked goods and stuff like that. Um, in there. And I'm hoping like they can make a corner store in yeah. for that too, you know, because it's a big deal. I don't know how many guys, uh, yeah, do you know people how many there will be, 20. Teammates. So, We'll I'll reach out to Carrie and ask her. We'll see what happens. Yeah. So unless anybody has anything else, I would be happy to entertain a motion to adjourn. <laughs> I'd like to motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? I'll second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Then we are adjourned. Great. Thank you, anybody who is watching on Zoom. No. Wow. I